Sweet. Uh, let's pray and we'll get started today. Father, we submit this time into your hands. We thank you uh, once again for this beautiful day, your grace and your mercy that sustains us, that upholds us, for your faithfulness. Uh, we thank you, Lord. I will submit this uh, two sessions into your hands, Lord. I pray even as we learn more about you and ministry, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to teach us and help us understand your ways, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's get started. Today, uh, in the last class, um, the week before last, uh, we discussed chapter four. We looked at uh, uh, the title Learning to Minister Healing and Deliverance from Jesus. Right? That's the chapter we looked at. And uh, we saw uh, what are the different ways uh, that Jesus ministered and he functioned in, as he ministered healing and deliverance, right? And just to do a quick uh, recap of what we learned in the last class, uh, we see that um, he, Jesus made the will of God very clear, uh, and during the course of this uh, of this subject, we've learned that it is God's will to heal everyone. It is His intention. It is uh, His will, and He's He dem Jesus demonstrated that, and He showed that. Right. So the will of God. We learned about the will of God, the exercise of faith, uh, the flow of compassion. Uh, the importance of compassion uh, as we are ministering in healing and deliverance and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, uh, dealing with the issue of sin and salvation uh, and, um, and some of the methods that Jesus used. We looked at that uh, and the nature of Jesus's healings and miracles. Uh, we looked at all of those and a couple of things that what we also looked at was uh, one basic foundation or a, or a fundamental thing. What we looked at was uh, the norm versus the exception, right? The norms is that we are expected to come with faith. We are expected to flow with compassion, right? We are expected to uh, do what God calls us to do. That's the norm thing, right? We ask for God's kingdom to come and invade our realm, invade our situation uh, and whatnot. And then uh, there, there are these exceptions where God decides to step in uh, in his divine authority and sovereignty. He steps into a situation and he decides to do what uh, you know, uh, what he wants to do. Uh, and one of the key uh, verses that we kept reminding us was Psalm 115, verse three. Right? He is God. He's in heaven. He does as he pleases. Okay. Um, so those are all the things that we uh, looked at in the last class. Um, and so let's continue to go to. We want to. We want to try and cover chapter five and chapter six today. Uh, we'll see how that goes, okay? Um, and and I hope that uh, you know you've learned something um, so far in the couple of months that we've been studying this chat, uh, the subject. Um, there was something that you could take off um, and learn, okay? Um, so moving on to chapter five, uh, we learn about the secret to uh, ministry as demonstrated by Jesus. Okay, the secret to ministry as demonstrated by Jesus. Now, please notice the title. It doesn't specifically or necessarily just mean uh, ministering in healing and deliverance or healing ministry, but it's ministry in general. But everything what Jesus did um, and a huge part of his ministry was healing and deliverance. Okay, so um, the secret to ministry as demonstrated by Jesus. Now, uh, there are four keys um, or secrets to ministry as, the, as Jesus demonstrated. Now, uh have you i'm not sure if you asked this question but um i have asked this question is like hey um you know what is you know what is the secret behind that person's success in ministry or in business or you know how is that person so successful uh in ministry uh what what is their secret what are some of their keys have you asked this question uh you know have you looked at another man of god or a woman of god and say like well, I want to be like that. Uh, how are they so anointed? How do they move so beautifully uh, in, the Holy, in the Holy Spirit and in, uh, in the gifts and whatnot? Has anyone asked that question? We're looking at another person or another man of God or a minister or a businessman, whatever. Right? Um, at some point, we've all have wondered. We've all have this question, right? Uh, and so 
and we when we look at Jesus and everything he did uh, you know and in his time uh, on earth uh, we can't help but wonder uh, how do you do it like what were some of the keys uh, or secrets uh, to you know to his ministry in the way that he functioned okay and so that is what this chapter is all about right um, and I think this is awesome that we get to uh, learn some of the secrets of Jesus, uh, which has been there in the Bible. <laughs> so, a uh, few things, right? Uh, the first one is ministering out of intimacy and obedience. These are some of the key keys and secrets to Jesus' ministry. So that's what we're looking at, right? A ministering out of intimacy and obedience, ministering based on the finished work of the cross, ministering from a place of dominion and authority and ministering through the presence and the power of the holy spirit okay um so the first thing we looked at uh, we, let's look at is ministering out of intimacy and obedience intimacy and obedience right so jesus walked in uh, an absolute intimate relationship with the father um, and we read that in the Gospel of John time and time again, not only in the Gospel of John, but uh, we've read a lot of scriptures and passages from the Gospel of John, and hence I'm mentioning that Gospel. But in all the Gospels that we read, we see how uh, beautifully and intimately Jesus walked with the Father. Right, And time and time again, we see that the Father saying, I love my Son, and the Son says, I love the Father. I do everything what He tells me to do, um, and I do everything what He shows me to do, etc., etc. Um, right? So He walked in complete uh, obedience with the Father. Right? Um, and and that is a testament to the uh, humility of Jesus itself. Right? He did what he saw the Father do and taught what he learned from the Father. Okay, so intimacy, obedience, and fruitfulness are inseparable. It simply means that intimacy and obedience go hand in hand. Now, you can't say that you are having an intimate relationship with God and not walk in obedience. Right. If you tell me that you have an intimate relationship uh, with the Father, with God, that means it will also be shown in your walk uh, is that you are walking in obedience. Right. Uh, and if you're walking in obedience, it simply means that you are walking, you're having that intimate relationship with the Father. Um, so let's look at John chapter 15, verse 4, 5, and 7. It says, Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches uh, he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing okay uh, you might want to hi uh, highlight it underline it whatever is without me you can do nothing we need to realize that okay without him without jesus in our lives there's really nothing much you can do okay uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you okay uh, and so uh, this intimate relationship is developed with just being in his presence longing to be in his presence um and uh you know, reading his words, spending time in prayer, speaking and praying in tongues, singing in tongues, etc., etc. Okay, uh, and I've often said this is um, if you break the word intimacy, it simply means into me you see because I show you, right? And um, just think about all uh, the relationships, uh, close relationships, your best friends, your close friends, the relationship between husband and wife. Uh, or good friends or whatnot um, they are they are willing to pay a certain price to get to know another the other individual a little bit more right uh, and, and uh, most of the times we as Christians um, we like the idea of being a Christian and we like the idea of wanting to love God right we like the idea of uh, 
I love God. I love Him. I love the Bible. Uh, but we don't often um, act on that. Right? What good is it if you keep telling a person that you love them and you do not show it in action? You don't express it uh, in words or you know whatever in action. That person isn't going to uh, feel anything, right? <laughs> if you get what I'm saying, right? Um, and so that's the whole point here is that if you say that you love God, and if we say that we love Him, uh, we want to live our life for Him, we want to die for Him, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, we got to make um, pay the price. Right to uh, to walk in that intimate relationship with him, to to spend time in his word, to read him, to read the word, to study the word, to pray, spend time in prayer, spend time in praying in tongues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that is how you build an intimate relationship uh, with the with with God. Um, right. Uh, look look at another verse, John chapter fifteen, verse nine and ten. It says, "As the Father loved me, I also have loved you." abide in my love there's this constant invitation hey just as the father loves me uh, and i in him uh, you know i have loved you the same so come abide in my love come there's the, the doors are wide open uh, the invitation is there for you to come the red carpet is rolled out um, so if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love Okay, so look at that. True obedience is an expression of intimacy, right? So true obedience is an expression. What is an expression? It's you are expressing it. You are showing it off. Okay, you see, because I love you, I'm going to do this. That what makes what pleases you, what makes you happy, what uh, what puts a smile on your face, uh, I'm going to do that because I love you. Um, do you have friends where they say uh, you give them an advice, they listen to all your advice, and they do exactly the opposite of what you tell them to do, um, right? So you, you you get what I'm saying, okay? So uh, how does one express um, ob obedience? It simply is true. Obedience is an expression of intimacy, love, and devotion, affection, etc. Right. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's John 14, 15. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Right. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Okay. Um, and so in the notes, it's mentioned that obedience is an expression of our relationship with him. Uh, we love him. We are his friends. Hence, we obey him. Uh, now, there are two kinds of obedience, isn't it? Um, one is a person who commands your obedience or your respect um, or your love. And the other one is where one another individual demands your respect, um, demands that you work for them. Right? Um, if, for example, uh, those who were slaves and the masters uh, in Egypt, the slaves did everything what the Egyptians told them to do. Not because they enjoy doing that, but you know they were demanded. Otherwise, they would get whipped. So slaves did it uh, because they were demanded to do so. Uh, but here we obey our God because we love Him, and it is and everything is born out of love uh, in the kingdom of God. Everything that we do must be out of love. And if there's a single thing that you uh, that you are doing uh, is because uh, you know, because you have to do it, then it, it immediately becomes a work and you'll begin to burn out, as they say it. Okay, so obedience is an expression of a relationship with uh, with our with our God. Um, where we love him, we are his friends, hence we obey him. Okay. Uh, and at the, at the bottom of that of the page, uh, John G. Lakes uh, writes something uh, beautiful. Um, and by the way, um, we we'll learn it. We'll talk a little bit about John G. Lake a little later. But yeah, here's a quote of what he said. Uh, he says, uh, "Healing is basically a spiritual thing. The power that heals the sick comes from God, down through your spirit, 
out through your hands into that man or woman. If you are having the right kind of spiritual fellowship, you will have power with God and there is no escaping it. And this is true that when we are in the right communion and fellowship with the Lord, there is not power enough in all hell to put disease upon our little finger. Okay, uh, John G. Lake is one of those individuals who had the most powerful, uh, impactful, and successful uh, healing ministries uh, in South Africa and Africa. Uh, I mean, people in in a particular town would be afraid if when if they hear that John G. Lake is coming to their town because uh, hospitals will be empty uh, to every town or village that he would visit, um, and so and people would bring you know sick people in trucks to his crusades and his meetings and and so john g lake is um, uh, is one of those generals of god as we say it right that whose life that you know we need to look at and 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 study as well and um and hence the final assignment if you've already seen it um okay cool um let's move on so that's the first uh success or a key um of Jesus's ministry is ministering out of intimacy and obedience. Um, there is an invitation for us to walk in intimate relationship with the Father. Okay, and the second thing is ministering based on the finished work of the cross. Okay, ministering based on the finished work of the cross. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, it says, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Right? He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Now, what we need to understand uh, here is now uh, Jesus is making advance payment. Now, Jesus healed everyone who he healed uh, before the cross, isn't it? But he healed and ministered based on the finished work of the cross because he knew that he was going to pay the full price. And so this is what we call it as, you know, a down payment or an advance payment, right? So, uh, and, and hence the Matthew, the gospel writer, he is quoting Isaiah. And we've looked at this before. Right? He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, right? And so Jesus ministered based on you know what he would accomplish on the cross. Like he knew he was going to die on the cross, and he, he knew that he was going to rise again from the dead, right? So what he did in the gospels before his actual death on the cross was a, a foretaste of the benefits of his finished work on the cross. And so when you and I minister uh, in healing and deliverance today, we know for certain what Jesus has done on the cross. Are we certain? Is everybody so certain and sure that Jesus died on the cross and rose again? Yes? No? Maybe? Yep. Yeah. Right. Sin, sickness, and Satan, they were all dealt with on the cross. Okay, what? Sin, sickness, diseases, uh, sorrows, griefs, our pain, everything was dealt with on the cross. Everything, the payment is paid in full. Right? Sickness was removed, Satan is defeated, sin was paid for. Right, um, and so what is left is for us to receive it by faith and walk in it. Right, we receive it by faith. So we, if you are receiving, if you are asked praying for healing, uh, we receive it by faith. If you are ministering healing and deliverance, we minister in faith, uh, knowing fully, knowing and being fully aware of what is what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Okay, so ministering based on the finished work of the cross is uh, extremely crucial and important. And the next next key uh, in Jesus' ministry is ministering from a place of dominion and authority. Okay, 
uh, dominion and authority. Um, so Jesus was never intimidated or threatened by any, you know, demon uh, or any kind of disease. Like, you know, so, I mean, I'll be honest, guys. I, I've seen a lot of uh, deliverance happen to demon possessions, uh, you know, growing up and all of that. You, you see people manifesting and all of that, right? Uh, and as a kid and whatnot, I'd be like, oh, good Lord, what is happening here? Right? Um, what, you know, when, when the demon starts manifesting through a human body, it's uh, very painful to watch. It's very sad to watch what uh, what the demon spirit puts a human being through right uh, they start howling they start moving like a snake um, and do all kinds of nonsense and whatnot um, right and uh, which is not which is not nice which is not pleasant to, to see or witness isn't it but what when we look at the life of Jesus he functioned out of dominion and authority Right? He was not shaken or intimidated or taken by surprise. It's like, oh, I don't know how to deliver you know, this. I don't know how to deal with this demonic oppression and whatnot. Right? Uh, he functioned in authority. Right? He did not uh, plea, like he's saying, he did not beg. He's saying, okay, please, can you go? Uh, you know, don't embarrass me in front of all these people. Please, 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 please. <laughs> we don't see Jesus doing that at all right uh he knew that they were defeated uh he knew that they have no authority uh because he knew that all authority in heaven and earth was given to him right uh we look at uh, the, the demonic spirits were scared um, of jesus and we look at in luke chapter 4 verse 34 it says right, let us alone uh what have we to do with you jesus of nazareth did you come to destroy us i know who you are the holy one of god Right, um, and so we see that they are tremble in fear and asking to just let them be. And in verse thirty-six of Luke chapter four, we see that uh, what a word this is! For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they came out. I used to you see those choice of words there. For with authority and with power he commands the unclean spirits. And they came out. Okay, and the beauty of this whole thing uh, is is seen in Luke chapter ten, verse nineteen. Is Jesus has given us the same authority that He functioned in? Like Luke chapter ten, verse nineteen, He says, "Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing." shall by any means hurt you right um and i hope you are encouraged just listening to this or reading this scriptures and uh, because that is the intention is to encourage us is um this is one of the keys uh you know to how jesus functioned and and in everything that jesus did he just didn't do it for himself and move on he did it to also show us uh, how we can function and how we can minister to people uh, in this day and age. Right? We are encouraged uh, to walk in intimate relationship with him, to walk in obedience with him, to minister based on the finished work of the cross. Right? That, that the sickness and, and Satan is defeated and they have no power and authority for all authority Jesus has given to us in the same uh, authority that he functioned in, right? And as the last point, uh, we've again spoken quite at large about this, is ministering through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, right? The presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God with us, God on earth, right? Uh, Again, uh, this is just a little bit of a trinity and whatnot. It's it's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's they are one and the same. Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit is with us. Right? Uh, I mean, just knowing that a truth uh, should encourage us to function in authority. That He is with us, Emmanuel. 
right? And so many scriptures that says, I, you know, it goes on to say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's not just for us to feel good. It's to function in authority, saying, okay, he is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And in that authority, in, in that assurance, I'm going to minister healing and deliverance, knowing that my God is with me. Right? He is in me and he is over me. Right? So again, we learn that everything that Jesus did, uh, he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? Right? So uh, we looked at, time, at that point time and time again. So uh, those are the four keys. Let's look at it uh, very quickly. What are the four keys or secrets to ministry? As Jesus demonstrated, first one is ministering out of intimacy and obedience ministering based on the finished work of the cross ministering from a place of dominion and authority and ministering through the presence and the power of the spirit amen um so is this clear enough uh, any questions on this chapter so far Are you all with me following? Okay. All right, then um, let's move into uh, chapter six now. Uh, chapter six. Is answers to common questions and sicknesses on uh, on healing. Okay. Uh, now, in this chapter, we are going to address um, common questions uh, that people have asked, um, you know, or people have regarding um, healing and sickness and whatnot. Okay. Now, these are not the only questions, and so uh, these are frequently asked questions. Uh, you know, FAQs, as we say it, uh, with regards to healing and deliverance, uh, where um, you know, people have regarding healing ministries. Okay, I see Nina has something to say. While Jesus was on earth, he ministered through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, like we would, yes, you know. I mean, uh, what Jesus has done has he's he said very clearly that you would do this and much more greater things, right? And so, there is a place, an intimate relationship with God that we can walk in. Uh, where we can function the way Jesus did and do greater things than what he had, what he did, than that very clearly Jesus Himself has said. So, and it all comes down to us, right? Um, and um, our end of the equation, as I say it, is um, how uh, how willing are we to build that intimate relationship with Him and walk in obedience. Yeah, is that a clear, Nina? Anything you want to ask? Actually, I'm I'm taking the class from home today, so you can also unmute and speak. So. <laughs> okay. May I, may I? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I know. So what I was asking, I mean, we've kind of dealt with it a bit in the Christology and things like that yeah. but just just to clarify more than anything uh so when jesus while he was on earth i mean we keep uh, hearing that he was fully god and fully man yes. but he refrained yes. from using those powers i mean as he would i mean like like i mean he didn't use the powers that he had but he limited uh, himself to using the power of the Holy Spirit because in some scripture it says the presence of the, uh, the power of the Lord was present to heal right in spite of Jesus yes. being there so does so would that mean that Jesus limited himself to uh, depending on the Holy Spirit for all the works that he did uh, which is why we have the confidence to be able to um, do exactly like he did 
I was just wanting to clarify that. Uh, so that uh, again, uh, kind of, I'm just trying to understand this part. Where the times where Jesus did not heal, uh, are you saying that he limited himself? Uh, no, no, no. Whenever he did what he did, whether it was mm -hmm. raising the dead or any right. miracle that he did and you were looking at, so yes. he limited himself to using the power of the Holy Spirit like we would do is what I had asked. Yes. So, I mean, it is not as if he used yes. his omni, uh, omnipotence. Yes. yes. He, he, he did not use it that way. I mean, because it says he refrained Correct. from using, no? So, yes, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, we keep saying that uh, he was fully God and fully man. Um, and, yes. you know, in, he was fully God in his identity that he was a son of God. And it was very huh. clearly, you know, uh, mentioned again during the time of his baptism, uh, you know, whatnot, that the heavens opened up. Everybody heard a voice saying, okay, behold, uh, my son, whom in whom I'm well pleased. So he was fully God in his identity. Right. And okay. and then he was fully man in because he was in a human body. Um, so he was mm -hmm. not only present. Uh, we see that he was mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, he, he grew in strength and he grew in wisdom. And all of that is what yes. we uh, what we mean when we say that he was fully man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, so let's move on then to uh, chapter six, um, answers to common questions on sickness and um, healing. Uh, again, this chapter is about uh, addressing some of the most um, misunderstood passages in the Bible, um, right? Uh, or how people can take one passage of scripture and kind of manipulate it or misinterpret it, um, as we can, as we say. Okay. So. So what we must do, or what we must keep in mind, is that um, if you're interpreting a scripture, right, every scripture or all scripture must be interpreted in the light of the rest of the scripture, right? You, we cannot just take one verse in isolation and say, okay, this is what this verse alone says. So, uh, and use it according to, uh, and just believe that, uh, and you know don't take the time to study it in the light of the whole the rest of the scripture that's one thing and then when we are interpreting it we interpret it in the light of the person of jesus christ himself why because he is perfect theology right uh, there is no th the other theology or doctrine that is greater than jesus himself okay so everything we know about god must align itself to what is seen and heard through God who became flesh and that is Jesus Christ okay can I say that again right everything we know about God must align itself to what is seen and heard through Jesus Christ himself right anything we claim to uh, understand about God that is not aligned to what Jesus said or did um, has to be questioned and discarded right again simply because Jesus Christ is perfect theology the word who became flesh okay so uh in with that in mind let's look at some of the misunderstood passages uh, scriptures etc okay uh let's see the first one is paul's thorn All right paul's thorn um we've read about this in the book of corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 and 10 um and lest it says uh and lest i should i uh, should be exalted above above measure by the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of satan to buffet me lest i be exalted above measure concerning this thing i pleaded with the lord three times that it might depart from me and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness therefore most gladly i will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, um, so let's look at this passage uh, and see what we can learn. Okay, so Paul, Apostle Paul, uh, 
he received abundance of revelations, right? We see that um, he had a lot of visitations, personal experiences. He was taken up to the third heavens, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Paul, and, and it is out of those, all those revelations that he's written a third of the New Testament itself, um, right? And so then he says, lest Paul gets puffed with pride, God permitted a thorn in the flesh. Uh, now, many of us you know how it's been interpreted or misinterpreted or understood is that okay this thorn that paul is talking about is uh sickness or an uh, or an eye problem uh eye problem because uh, uh you know there's a in an epistle he writes where i i've written everything in big big uh fonts <laughs> uh right uh, so they relate the thorn to that because he can't see very well or something or a hand problem or or whatever okay but paul when he's writing this uh, scriptures right he's saying he's very clearly okay let's just look at that verse 7 okay um, and lest i should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. Okay, so a messenger uh, is a Greek word. It comes from the Greek word means uh, angelos. Right, so in the lowercase angel again simply means a messenger. And we look at in 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 the book of Revelation, chapter two and three. Uh, you know, it, it 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 talks about the angel of the church. In other words, a messenger. Right. Um, and so the messenger of Satan, hence, was a spiritual being that constantly opposed Paul in his ministry uh, to bring him down, to slow things down in his um, in his life. Uh, right. So it was is not it's, it's very plain and it's very clearly mentioned that what Paul is talking about is that he is referring to uh, the messenger of Satan. Uh, that you know that that keeps hindering him, that keeps to uh, that keeps striking him repeatedly, um, right? So and he and he says this in Second uh, Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty three and twenty seven. Uh, I'll read for us. Uh, he states that um, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes above measure in prisons, more frequently in deaths, often. From the Jews, five times I've received 40 stripes minus one, right? Uh, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day I have been in deep, in journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils of in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, often in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Right? Uh, now, while some of uh, these hardships were what he took upon himself, many of these came as oppositions right, to work that he was doing right and all of these served to keep his feet on the ground help him walk in humility knowing that he had to depend upon uh the lord okay so uh, the point here is uh it's very clear what you know the thorn that he is um is referring to uh is a demonic spirit a messenger from satan Right, because of the abundance, that's the reason, right? Because of the abundance of revelations that was given to um, Paul. Now, we have to keep this in mind. Uh, and, you know, very, what is very important is that um, we don't receive, uh, you know, such uh, in the abundance of revelations like Paul did today, because what the uh, revelations that Paul did uh, receive was put together in the canon of what we call today as the Bible. Right? And he's written like the third of the New Testament. Right? So as believers today, none of us have received such abundance of revelations. Right? Uh, and we have not been used in the same manner as Paul to have the privilege of, uh, say, we, we say there's a thorn um, in the flesh or uh, some sort. Right? Um, and so that that is very clear. 
okay so for us to claim that our sickness is a thorn in the flesh uh, okay that's a very important thing right for us to claim that our sickness is a thorn in the flesh given to us for a grand spiritual purpose or whatever is uh, not the right thing to say it in a very simple manner okay it's, it's a very wrong thing to confess or declare okay and so that's the one passage uh, that is often misunderstood uh, misinterpreted which is Paul's thorn uh, that talks about in Corinthians okay um, and so okay before we continue what we'll do is we'll pause here we'll take a break uh, we'll come back and resume with the next session okay I'll see you all later